Alrighty, welcome to another tutorial. Today, we're going to be talking about genetic clustering and then creating phylograms or dendrograms according to that clustering. Now, um, this was one of my favorite things to do during my PhD because it allowed me to visualize some of these connections that happened between um, the genotype and the phenotype. And then I could start making uh, some inferences around that. But creating this graph, creating this figure was one of the most one of the hardest things that I had to do because it just wasn't simple and it never seemed to work properly. And so I'm going to go through how I did it and hopefully this will help you if you choose to do something similar. So um, here, are the library, here are the libraries that we're going to add today. So Diplier, um, this first, the second library is a, a package. Um, devoted to multivariate analysis of genetic markers. Uh, the NAM package is the nested, so nested association mapping, which is done with a group out of uh, Purdue, Katie Rainey's group with uh, Alan Carr. Um, and then the DEND extend package, which is what will allow us to make our dendrogram. Uh, and then the circularized package, which allows us to make a circular dendrogram or turn that dendrogram into a circular dendrogram. So um, please install those or uh, um, implement those packages and then the parallel computing just because we'll be working with some uh, genotypic data it's always nice to do some parallel computing uh, to utilize all the cores in your computer uh, to make things faster. Two of the websites or tutorials that I used um, to help build my knowledge. These aren't exactly identical to what we'll be doing today, but they're listed here. So feel free to look at them. And, and if you get stumped, there's, there's a lot of, of help online as well. So here um, you can uh, upload or input your uh, genotypic data. I called mine GD as in a genetic distance. And it looks just like this in which down the left-hand side we have genotype along um, so those are the, the columns and then uh, along the, um, or those are the rows and the columns are the SNPs. And I don't have a label. I removed the label in a previous step. So that's just genotype 1, genotype 2, all the way down to about 300 genotypes, which I had in my study. So I'm going to use the gdist function and compute the genetic distance um, using using that function out of the NAM package, I believe. So it creates an object, but it's unable to find it because I didn't actually install. So but I did that already. Install the NAM. OK. And let's try it again. There we go. So I'm using NAY distance. And uh, there's other options. I believe there's four, five, six methods. And I tried them all. And I stuck with NAY distance, which is kind of the default. And if you're curious, you can read up more about it. Um, if you just search for the NAM package. Uh, then I needed to understand, okay, I have this genotypic data and I wanted to do some data reduction, so I needed to cluster them into, into like, um, like clusters depending on their genetic distance. Uh, but I didn't know how many clusters to use, so I needed to first approach it in that way. So how many clusters? Uh, I need to use this other package, which is this one here, in order to identify how many clusters to use. So I'm going to create an object here um, and that's based on the ploidy level of 2 which is where I'm using soybeans so ploidy level is 2 um, tabs to separate those values and we can run through that and that might take a while um, but we'll come back when it's done. Alright now this object has been created and it's just OBJ and what I'm going to do is going to find how many clusters um, is the most appropriate amount of clusters for those uh, different genotypes to cluster into. So I'm going to uh, use this particular function to find out how many groups essentially or find dot clusters and this again is broken out of this um, added genetic library or that package. So this might take a little bit too and we'll come back when it is done but yeah I just took out the I just used the default so the maximum number of clusters was 20 
um, the number of PCAs it's using is 200 and false for the scale. And the function is done now and we can see that it's created this figure here and this figure here is showing you the value of the BIC versus the number of clusters. BIC stands for Bayes Information Criterion and it, it allows you to uh, select which model you think fits best. So in this particular instance we want the model uh, that has the lowest uh, value. And so here going um, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 has the lowest value and so that's what we're going to pick moving forward. And so if we go down here further uh, we want to use the H plus, which is hierarchical clustering. This is in the stats package uh, to start clustering. But before we do that, before I forget, um, it says to choose the number of clusters. And so it's a defined cluster, so we want to choose 8 because it's the lowest. So type in 8 and press enter. Great. Um, now we want to do our hierarchical clustering. And now we're starting to build um, our, our dendrogram, essentially. And for this, I'm going to use uh, the Ward's D method. There's a number of other methods that you can use and try out. Uh, for my purpose, I decided to use Ward's D, but you can find a lot more of this written online. I know there's the complete linkage method as well as a bunch of other methods. If you just type in hclust into your help function, uh, it's all right there. Uh, there's a lot of write up in it. And so um, once we've done that, run that so we now have an object that's hierarchical clustering M1 and now we want to cut the tree so cutting the tree is essentially just um, we build the tree like so based on the genetic distance you get this hierarchical clustering cutting the tree is basically how many different clusters you want to cut them up into so here we have an example of cutting up into three clusters but you can raise or lower that line to raise or lower the number of clusters so we set it up k equals 8, we'll run that, and I just wanted to run a summary of, of what we did there. And so here we go, um, these are the 8 different clusters with my genotypic data. Um, we've got cluster number 1 is 29, cluster number 6 only is 8, cluster number 2 has 96. I know from experience that's mostly the, the Chinese cluster, <clears throat> whereas the American cluster is in cluster number 1, but we'll get into that in a little bit. So now we want to create our, our dendrogram. So essentially, um, what we could have done is just taken this uh, function and plug it into an as dendrogram. Um, it should all remain the same. <clears throat> and there we go. We have our dendrogram function. We have our dendrogram, um, and that's called, just called uh, dend. So we can plot that, and it makes a pretty cool graph. Pretty cool. And there we go. We've got our are 292 genotypes, I believe, and this is how they're all connected together. But, like I said earlier, I wanted to circularize that and maybe um, personalize it a little bit. So, what I'm gonna, what I do here is I read in some of the meta metadata. So, for example, what country um, is a particular genotype in? What type of growth habit? What maturity group? Um, <clears throat> any type of this, uh, this metadata that you want to use uh, for your visualization. So I input that and uh, create all those labels, make them all factors, um, subset them into different days just based on my data. So this is all just kind of my own data and how I'm um, wrangling it to work with this. So I can look at the different um, columns that I have and so there's like 65 66 different columns and I want to pull different metadata out of these columns that I'll utilize moving forward. <clears throat> now the next set is just to um, change the size of the labels, um, set the uh, thickness of the branches for example and these are all different items that you can tweak similar to how you tweak them on ggplot. And now I wanted to set the colors of the branches and I can just use it do it manually so we have eight different branches because there's eight different uh, clusters and I just I just took eight different um, eight different colors by random you could also use like a color palette like the rainbow color palette and I'll get into that a little bit more in a future video 
<clears throat> but for this one, I wanted to just select which color. Um, now, so I created an object called calls uh, branches, and I want to use that object here as the color. There's eight branches. That's the dendrogram, and that's the function that we're going to use. So now that we have the dendrogram built, we have the colors for different clusters named. We also want to um, visualize or change maybe the label of those branches that that's down here, um, and the color of those those branches or the color of those labels. So we've got three uh, different variables we can work with. We can work with um, the branches themselves and what colors and how many branches you have. For mine, it's in mine in particular is eight different branches, so eight different colors. And then we have the, col the, the text of the label. So here, right now, they're just numbers from 1 to 300 or 292. And then we have the colors of those different um, leaves. I call these the leaves and these the branches. So the colors of the leaves. So we'll get into that right here. So I want to manually match the labels, um, which is the 12th column or whatever it may be. It, it should be, the, say, the nth column of my data. So this first one, I have 23 here in my D9 data label. So number 23 is country. Okay, so yeah, let's use country. And you need to do order.dendrogram um, with the parentheses of, of den, so they stay in the right order. This took me a long time to figure out and how to do it right. So now that I've sent um, the numeric numbers, essentially the color of the leaves based on country, I can then um, set the leaf label uh, based on some other factor. So here I have the name. Um, I can set it as 31. What's 31? The flower color. So, so let's just set it as um, maybe the name for right now. So now I have all three variables set. The branch color, the leaf color, and the leaf label. Now I use this function um, using with some deplier with piping from one to the next to uh, put them all together. And it'll build my dendrogram. So there we have it. We've got uh, different colors of branches. We've got different colors of leaves and we've got different labels in the leaves. Now the issue that we have is because I have so much data it really doesn't visualize very nicely because it's all crammed into a space. <clears throat> So I use a circularized dendrogram function in order to spread it, fan it out essentially, and make it more easily uh, read. So I'm going to run that now. All right, we're done. Um, we've completed uh, circularizing the data. And you could tell with the previous dendrogram, it wasn't able to change the colors uh, based on what I wanted my colors. It uses the, the basic, I think this is a rainbow style or rainbow palette. <clears throat> But the circularize does use um, the specified cyan and red and yellow, what I had specified up here. So now I can go in and, and look a little bit closer and identify, okay, um, it's interesting that it puts these together um, in here. And I knew all the magenta is American uh, genotypes and this branch here is is cluster number one so I found like oh most of the most of cluster one is American genotypes and it has the name here what I can do is I can change that in order to read the um, instead of reading the name which I have listed here I could probably set it so it would read the country of origin and the country was 23 so we'll type that in <coughs> And we will run this again. All right, it is done building our circularized dendrogram or phylogram. And now you can see that USA uh, is labeled USA and they're all magenta as well. And they all kind of fit together in this uh, cluster number one. There is one over here, I believe, but I think that is the only one I see that is not within there. So it's pretty interesting and it allows you to visualize what's going on based on how your data genotypically cluster together and then how your data phenotypically clusters together.
Um, so I thought this is really cool. I use this a lot in my research just by digging around and, and changing the labels, changing the colors, bringing in different metadata, um, maybe seed coat color or flower color, uh, pubescence color, maturity group, any other different metadata that you want to use that you want to start, start to draw conclusions. I, I even use the same type of approach to do phenotypic based clustering based on complete or wards D approaches um, and k-means I believe and then look to see how the phenotype were, were clustering compared to how the genotype were clustering uh, and then I found that very interesting and, and very helpful um, for my research uh, and yeah so now that we have it built uh, and if that's the way we want it to look like I said if you want to modify the labels to change you can one thing that's very difficult to do is modify the colors um, of the leaves to suit the colors that you want usually they're just random and you can't really change them so you just kind of pick a random and they'll pick I mean black cyan red blue um, but it's very difficult to specify unless you want to specify everyone individually so for me for all 300 I had to do that all individually once that's all done you can export it I usually export it as a TIFF uh, or a PNG so just hit that like that, um, that function, circularized integram, put it within there, dev.off, and away you go. And it should appear here as a high def file where you can zoom in, pretty high resolution as you zoom in. And uh, away you go, you can input that into your latest research. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Um, what I'm gonna be doing next, I think, is going to be using a heat map function and adding another layer of interest um, um, to this uh, focus. Anyway, I hope you had a great day and you learned something and I'll check you on the next video. See you later. Bye.